All right, thanks everybody. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, loading genomic variant data into the MGB Biobank, uh, uh, which is an I2B2 instance. Um, so just a little bit about the Biobank. Um, so we have uh, a Biobank of, right now it's about 125,000 patients, and these are patients that are consented um, into the biobank for broad research. So the patient comes in and they said, you wanna be part of the biobank and they collect, uh, they say yes. And they said that we can link their you know, EHR data, um, collect blood samples. And those blood samples are ultimately genotyped. Um, right now we have genotype data for 43,000 um, patients, um, but the goal is to ultimately genotype everyone. Uh, or most most everyone. Uh, and so this is what kind of it looks like. So user logs in, we, we have a biobank portal, which is an I2B2 instance, and user logs in and they see this and um, we've loaded the genomic variant data. So so when a patient gets genotyped, um, their genomic data is, is made available as uh, raw VCF files. And we wanted to make, give users the ability to query those variants. And the use case is primarily for, for cohort discovery, right? So you, you wanna find out like in my population, how many patients have a variant on this gene or even a specific variant. Um, and, uh, and we wanted to be able to join that, to be able to run queries with, with other uh, data types, disease diagnoses, the usual things we work with. Um, so we, we, we started with an initial approach and I'm going to talk about that, but let me just show you how, how it kind of works right now. Um, so user can go in, this is our ontology. So, uh, right now we can query by two different kind of uh, types. We can either query by a gene, um, or we can query by, uh, an RSID, which is a DB SNP RSID. Uh, and you can query either SNPs, um, uh, or, or indels. And those are just the different types of variants. Um, so user can drag that over into the panel and that loads up this um, value box. Uh, and the value box is a custom value box that we built. Uh, and so this is a specific value box for the gene. Uh, so if you're gonna search by gene, so you type in your gene name and um, this is just a screenshot, but it does have an autocomplete. So you can kind of figure out like what, you know, as you're typing it, it tells you what genes are available. Uh, and then type that in and then you can select zygosity. Uh, so there's uh, like in any any genotype, there's like kind of four different options, um, which are uh, homozygous reference reference, meaning you don't have the variant. Um, homozygous uh, alternate alternate, meaning you have a variant from both your parents, or heterozygous, which is reference alternate, meaning you have the variant from one of your parents. And sometimes it's missing, although it's pretty rare to be missing. Um, and then you user can select that. And then uh, we also allow uh, selecting of a consequence. Um, and so these are kind of annotations that are tied to each variant. Uh, and those come in the VCF files and they're provided by our bioinformatics team. So each variant from some genomic database, we, we know uh, whether that variant actually causes a, a, a change in a protein. Um, and so you can kind of filter by those because oftentimes genes have many, many variants. So you want to just focus on the ones that you that might actually make a difference. So let's say I did that. And then here's here's kind of what it looks like. So once you hit that, um, it's uh, it, it creates this query. And so some of you, if you use um, the blob queries in I2B2, you might see this it's familiar. And so um, our initial approach was to use the blob. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, and um, then you can drag over uh, another concept. So here I'm, I'm dragging over concepts of who has confirmed COVID-19 and you get 43 patients. So this is, this is, this is what a user sees. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk ETL and then under the covers. Um, so I wasn't familiar with it and I'm sure a lot of you aren't familiar with this, but this is what like a standard VCF file, variant call format, I think. Um, that that we get from our bioinformatics team, uh, and it's kind of the standard uh, um, file. And what it is is it's a lot of like header information. But if you look down here, it's just saying each row is a variant, and each column is after. So there's a co couple columns here about like metadata, 
this info field has a lot of the annotations that we were talking about. The, the variant effect is actually the gene name. Um, this like information about which protein it alters. There's this upstream is like the consequence we were looking at, other information. And then each column after that is a patient. So a subject that's that's been genotyped. And you'll see the 0 0 means uh, homozygous, zygosity. So homozygous reference reference. This, so, so you see each patient has, has, has um, a zygosity going down the column. So it's kind of a little bit different. Um, and so our first approach was to load um, basically the VCF file into the observation fact table um, where each row is, uh, is a variant for a patient. Um, and so um, in our genotyping chip, each patient is genotyped on, on uh, about 1.7 million variants. And uh, we knew that was gonna be a lot. So we, we decided to only, only load um, data with uh, the, the zygosity was not homozygous reference reds because that's the most common. So that averages out to about 400,000 variants rows per patient. Um, and so we, and then we loaded in that info field into the observation blob. And again, we use the I2B2, uh, like the blob uh, query that uses the contains word, uh, keyword in SQL to, uh, we loaded this into SQL server, uh, but it basically uses the, the, like the main I2B2 um, contains query when you're searching the observation blob column. Um, and so when you saw that query, you saw that I was searching for a gene name and that gene name was searching in that blob. So find, I mean, all the patients that have a variant with the gene name in the observation blob field. So this is kind of what it looks like in the fact table. Um, so you'll see like the kind of standard things and here's a blob. So this is, I just queried out. So uh, for, these are a snippet of the variants um, on ACE2. And so there's each patient and, um, you know, a lot of the other data is really not, not that relevant. It's just an instance sum to this, to, to satisfy the primary key. And um, we do load the, the chromosome uh, number. This one actually has, happens to be on chromosome X. And this is the position. And I'll talk a little bit about that later, although you can't query by those right now. Um, and so this, this approach uh, is actually available on the community site. No, here's a link. Um, but <laughs> before you do that, um, there were quite a few limitations. So we, we ended up loading about 20,000 patients and we kind of hit a wall. Um, so 20,000 patients was giving up, was generating over 8 billion rows, uh, which was a lot. And um, it was a lot, not just for the loading the data, but also the full text indexing on the, on the, um, on, on the, on the table. And so any, any, any data loaded into that observation blob, uh, kind of by default uh, with the I2B2 schema is indexed using the SQL server full text indexing. And that's how it can do the query quickly. Um, and when we would load a batch, let's say we were both loading a batch of 5,000, it would take weeks to complete that indexing. And um, we ended up trying to break it up. So we used the I2B2 multi-fact to, to make up smaller batches. So we would do batches of 1,000, which was very difficult to manage um, and it helped. But eventually we just hit a limit and uh, the SQL server full text index would just get stuck and it would not complete and we had to start it again. Sometimes it would finish and we were frustrated. So we, um, uh, we were we were looking for another approach, and and another problem is that by not loading the the reference zygosities, it was hard to like for users to say, okay, I want to I want to create kind of my two by two table of who has a, the the variant and who doesn't, and it, you had to like drag over a different concept of who was genotyped, and it was kind of awkward to do that. So we did a new approach. And what we did was we call it the genomic data service. And we, um, we took the VCF files and we, process, we created the index from the VCF files, kind of custom code to build an, a binary index on the file so that we can run, quickly run a query to say, okay, which patients have this variant? And then we moved all the annotations into a lookup table. So basically you only had to look up once which variants are on this gene 
which variants are on this gene with this consequence. And that would give you the gene ID, I mean the variant ID. And then you could just look at that up in the BCF file. And then we put a, um, a, a REST API uh, web service on top of that and um, connected that to the CRC. So when a user ran a query, it would set the CRC would say, okay, I need to go to this API um, and, and basically send a request and uh, after doing the lookup and, and then the response would be uh, a list of patients. And that list of patients would be added to the um, an IDB2 patient set. And so kind of a little known uh, feature is that you can use a patient set in a query. So uh, you could use a patient set in a query item in a panel. And so that just kind of got combined in the background to, to, to form the query when you were using it with other, um, other query items. And we, we kept all the UI part the same. So the user actually didn't notice that we changed anything. <laughs> and even the contains kind of syntax, we kind of kept that. We just translated that to how the API, uh, API was called. Um, and so here's kind of what the gene lookup table was. So you could see, you know, this was one, one, one table that looks up which variants are on this gene. Uh, and this is what the, the API request was called. Uh, how it looks like. And so you would just, you would say, okay, these are the genes, that, the variants that I'm looking for. Um, and there's kind of down here is like a zygosity um, that this is kind of a coding system we use for the, what zygosity wanted. And then we have multiple data sets because each batch is, a, each each batch has a separate VCF file. So if you pass node, it'll search through all of them, but you can specify which batch. And then it would return a list of patients. Um, and that, that list of patients would be mapped using the patient mapping table and then loaded as a patient set and then used as a, as a, um, as part of the query. So, um, this is what we're using now and it's actually working great. We can run queries, uh, just genomic queries run in usually like 10 seconds. And that's usually with all the breakdowns. Um, so it runs fast. Um, it's so, so much easier to load the data, uh, and, um, easier to manage. Um, the files live, uh, the indexed files live in, um, as flat files on the server and they're just, uh, they're queried by the API, uh, using that indexing. Um, we talked about doing them in memory and that is a possibility, but, um, that could be something in the future. Uh, and the other nice thing is the annotations are managed separately, so they're not repeated for each patient, uh, and they're easier to manage that way. Uh, and so we do have some limitations um, that we that are kind of limitations of the first approach, but um, things that we thought we work on is to query by the chromosome and the position, because right now, unless the variant has an annotation, uh, you can't really query by it, and not all variants have annotations. So sometimes variants are not on genes. Sometimes they don't have an RSID. There's rare variants that people are increasingly caring about. Um, and then we don't annotate, update the annotations at all, uh, even though our bioinformatics people might be. Uh, so you know those annotations are constantly updated based on what the literature says. Uh, so it'd be nice to, to, to actually feed that into the system. And, uh, and there's a new kind of newer uh, annotation, which is uh, but pathogenicity. Um, and so we'd have to kind of build that into like just the UI and, um, and the, the, the REST API. So, so scaling that, the way that you query the, the annotations and the VCF is, is, does require like additional coding. Um, so that's kind of what we are. And just so the main message is like, <laughs> there are limits of loading everything into the fact table. And sometimes you just want to go to the source data uh, in, a, in a, a more scalable way. Uh, and so just to say, uh, most of this work was not by me. Uh, it was a combination uh, of a lot of different people with different skill sets. So, uh, so thank you to them. And I'm, I'm just communicating the good, good, the good news that we have it working and it works really well. So um, that's all I have and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Victor. There looks like there was a question earlier on from Michelle. Uh, she wanted to know whether, uh -oh. Michelle, you want to ask? Oh, yeah, no. I have two questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question was um, the UI, that first UI that you showed, is that metadata XML or is that custom JSON? I mean, a uh, custom JavaScript. Yep. Uh, yeah. So so it is, it's stored in uh, C metadata XML uh, and we have a new data type that, uh, that pops up this value box. Now, uh, is that part of the... 
I2B2, or is that going to be part of I new I2B2? It, it, it is. Uh, it's actually released in this. Uh, where do I have the link? Somewhere here. Uh, on this uh, this link on the community site, it does, mm -hmm. I think, uh, include some of that. It's it's basically just web client code. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Um, and again, once once you, the, the initial approach, we didn't change the the like the, the server part at all. It was just the web client that we changed. Um, but this newer approach, uh, the web, the, the, the CRC is changed um, using some work by Laurie Phillips and Mike to 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 do the query the APIs. So so both the UI and the CRC stuff is included in this link or no? No, because this first approach, this this link only has the first approach. We haven't okay. really released this new approach. We can ask Mike about that. Cool. I mean, I could see that being very generalizable for searching text, you know, just bringing yeah. back, bringing and back so the patient list once you've it's gone, super, maybe searching a last search or something. So it's that's super really powerful. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. we use it for searching text. So that I didn't talk about this, but in the note, we have, we have a notes repository. It works the same way. We have an API yeah. and it just does a query and it has like, I mean, it, it's kind of like a, the notes repository is like a, kind of like an I2B2 instance and it just searches the text in the, in the, in the, in the blob field. Uh, but it adds like the API adds logic to like make sure patients not like, a user's not searching for a name of somebody and it does like negation to construct like fancy things to construct the contain statements, which is nice. Very cool. Great, thank, thank you, Victor. Yeah, so yeah, I'll talk with you, Vivian, Sean, see if there's a way that we can implement some of this maybe in the Enclave using uh, like the 1000 Genome Project using those VCF files. Yeah, totally. Uh, so that, that would be great. Um, so that was basically uh, the ETI. I know that the UI, UI group is uh, next. So uh, there's no other questions. Thank you, everyone.